Let's look at why historical trauma is relevant for Native Hawaiians today. So we know that historical trauma is intergenerational, meaning that the effects of the trauma initially experienced do not end, but rather continues to be felt within the next generations. And so the trauma is passed on through generation through generation. And this understanding really helps us to recognize the challenges that Native Hawaiians are facing today. And also it's linked to the past trauma that all Native Hawaiians have endured. And some of the challenges are increases in mental health conditions, such as higher rates of depression and higher rates of anxiety. I think that's a really great point, Kim, that you bring up because we do see significantly higher rates of depression and other mental health conditions in the Native Hawaiian community. For example, in 2019, suicide was the leading cause of death for Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders ages 15 to 24. Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders were also three times less likely to receive mental health services compared to white individuals. We also know that in 2019, about 5% of Native Hawaiian adults uh, ages 18 and older received mental health services when compared to 16% of white individuals. Right, and the most common mental health conditions that we see through behavioral health with our hamana is anxiety and depression. And so, you know, not only do we see mental health concerns with hamana, uh, but we also see that within families, right? Because the hamana is part of that larger family system and those dynamics. And if mental health symptoms are not treated, right, we know that over time they can lead to individuals self-medicating. We also see higher rates of substance abuse, right? And this can create cycles within the family units, and this can impact parenting, this can impact physical well-being, financially, this really impacts the whole life of the family. And unhealthy drinking can actually become normalized when we see it being used as a coping skill throughout generations. And there's also an impact on, you know, incarceration, and parents being in jail. You know, one of the things that we see with high substance use rates, there's also a correlation with higher incarceration mm -hmm. rates mm -hmm. and the impact of incarceration rates on the family is really significant. Mm -hmm. So when we think about families who have parents who are incarcerated, siblings, cousins, mm -hmm. that's a significant trauma to the household and it really impacts the way that the family is going to function. Right, and it's and it's usually a huge loss to the to the family having a parent or even an auntie or uncle, just any family member that's not a part of that family unit. It's not just trauma in the sense of the emotional trauma too, right? I mean, especially if you're if you have a, a parent who is incarcerated, you've potentially lost one income earner for the mm -hmm. family, and so there's all these different dynamics that really shift when we right. look at. Uh, the impact that substance use, incarceration, mental health can have on families. Absolutely. When we look at these concerns, we can see how generational cycles can be perpetuated over time. Right, and this is really the link to the historical trauma that took place, right? And I think what we're talking about, what we're seeing is the real real disconnection that happens initially, you know, from when the historical trauma happened, right? And how that continues forward to create more disconnection within the family unit. And from that, we also see that there is a link uh, between the historical trauma and physical health as well. So we know that Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders have higher rates of smoking, alcohol consumption, and obesity. This group is also has less access to cancer prevention, and some leading causes of death among Native Hawaiians, Pacific Islanders include you know, cancer, heart disease, unintentional injuries, accidents. If we look at substance abuse, right, we're uh, much more likely to get hurt or have an accident when we're intoxicated. And then also stroke and diabetes also play a role in what we see with health concerns among Native Hawaiians as well. And this is why, you know, that statistic that I mentioned earlier that Native Hawaiians are less likely to be insured than non-Native right. Hawaiians. And this is uh, just another area where we can see the impact of that. Mm -hmm. So if we have increased socioeconomic stressors or an increase of a lack of resources to a community or to families, we're gonna see the trickle-down effects, mm -hmm. so for example, with health conditions. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think with a lot of the things that we were discussing, sometimes it's it might not be as clear as black and white to see the connection between 
child abuse rates or mental health conditions and historical trauma, but we know that there really is a link and that it's connected. And I think it's it's it can be hard to understand, right, how, you know, a trauma that happens years and years and years ago and how it influences and impacts lives of Native Hawaiians today. And and we know that it very, very much does. And it's it's complex and it's layered as well. I think that's one of the key components when we're talking about historical trauma, cultural trauma, generational trauma, is that it impacts communities, families, individuals, generations later. And oftentimes we see those trauma symptoms pop up, mm -hmm. even if those people haven't directly experienced mm -hmm. that you know, uh, initial right. event where the trauma first started. And it really is a trauma of disconnection, of, of being, you know, being disconnected from culture, from the aina, from, from all of those, from each other, really, right? And we, we really see that and how it, it can perpetuate itself. And it's reinforced. It can be reinforced right. over generations. Because mm -hmm. when we look at things like substance use, mm -hmm. incarceration, mental health, like we mentioned earlier, that really impacts the functioning of the family unit. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if we have a student who, you know, lost a parent to incarceration, mm -hmm. you know, that student's gonna have additional trauma that they're navigating, and then is it gonna impact the type of parent that they are right. if they don't receive yes. the right type of supports and, and help? When we're looking at historical trauma, one of the areas that really impacts the Native Hawaiian community is the loss of language. Language is such a key and critical component to cultural identity. And so when we look at generations prior, kupuna being beaten for speaking their native language and basically for the language being outlawed, mm -hmm. it really creates this disconnect and this loss of cultural identity. And so when people are having to navigate other issues that come up, and there is this huge loss of cultural identity, it's often really challenging for people to know how to approach or deal with these situations that maybe they previously might have had a little bit more resilience to had they had a strong cultural identity. Right, so so if, if somebody is being beaten for speaking their in their native language, that is gonna actually pair with that that is traumatizing to that individual. And and no wonder in the present times that there could be a fear of speaking the language and moving forward with that. It makes it makes a lot of sense when we look at it within the perspective of historical trauma with the link to today. Absolutely, and we can even see how that translates down generation by generation, right. right? So somebody who experienced a trauma for speaking their native language, it would be interesting, right, to see, well, how did they, how were they with their children? You know, did they teach their children how to speak exactly. Alelo Hawaii? Or did they, because they paired it with a traumatic event, right. were, was it something that was shameful? Right. And then we see that the cultural identity lessens time mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. And when people are then faced with just everyday stressors of life mm -hmm. um, and they don't have that connection, that solid foundation, that kahua to who they are, then we're more likely to see unhealthy coping skills. Right, right. And, that, and that's the trauma, is the shame, is the shame-based connecting to Olala Hawaii or even connecting to the land, right? I think the loss of land is, a, is another right. really significant one that mm -hmm. we've seen in the Native Hawaiian community. So we're, we've seen people who have really been displaced, right? Mm -hmm. And different concepts of land ownership introduced that was just completely foreign and a complete 180 to the way of being. So you, so you see the, the loss of land and how it connects to things like socioeconomic impacts, right? right? Mm -hmm. So now we have families, Native Hawaiian families that mm -hmm can't afford to live in Hawaii, right? Or who are having to struggle financially. And so we can see these direct correlations to previous events that have happened, even if it wasn't within their generation. Right, right, and it makes total sense the, the climate today with, with the Aina or just house ownership and the historical trauma that happened with the loss of land, it makes a lot of sense that there are that people are essentially, in a sense, being re-traumatized by not being able to own land here or own a home here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So when people have those experiences, what's being reignited in them is that trauma of their exactly. kupuna from generations exactly. prior. 
along with the loss of land, right, and the socioeconomic impacts, that's how we see all the other layers that are just so interconnected. Mm -hmm. So if people are struggling financially, you know, they're more likely to experience things like struggles with, with navigating that, right? We can see increased substance use, right, which sometimes leads to, you know, mental health conditions, mm -hmm. incarceration rates, domestic violence, you know, challenges with parenting, and, and that's how we see these issues persist across the generations. Exactly, exactly. We've talked a lot about historical trauma mm -hmm. and the ways in which that initial trauma or event can translate across the generations, and then some of the things that we're seeing present day as a result of that historical trauma. But we also know that there's opportunity for healing, mm -hmm. right? And there are some things that we can do and be intentional about to help to recultivate that cultural identity. Trauma, like we said before, trauma is, it disconnects, right? It doesn't allow integration. And to heal, to heal historical trauma, we first need to recognize what's happening, right, in our bodies, in our minds. We need to recognize that historical trauma is real and it has been passed on through generations. And also, how do we heal that disconnection? So how do we reconnect with the Aina, with Olelo Hawaii, with Native Hawaiian community and culture, with the families? How do we reconnect with that to really heal this? It's that reconnection that is the key and the most important. If we can help our communities, help our haumana to reconnect and strengthen their cultural identity, that's gonna be so incredibly healing for historical trauma and that's gonna help our communities, help our lahui to navigate and really move through mm. the things that we've experienced. And it might not be the easiest thing, right? And I know we, we just talk about historical trauma and, and all the things that we're seeing today, and it's hard work to have that awareness, and it can be painful at times and hard, but if we if we look further down the line, the, the light at the end of this tunnel is, is this reconnection and this vibrancy in the culture and re, really rediscovering it for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's the a couple awareness. things, right? Yeah. Is that at a very basic level, we need safety and security, right? Whether that's with food, shelter, clothing, like we need those basics to be there for any type of higher functioning right. to exist. Mm -hmm. But not far above that, those basic needs of safety mm -hmm. is gonna be that emotional and psychological safety. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the historical trauma piece really links to, mm -hmm. uh, and that's often forgotten about. We need people to feel emotionally safe. Yes and you know and okay and mm -hmm. strong there if we're mm -hmm. ever going to expect them to to achieve other things right. like learning you have to have community there, there's no way around it it's it's called co-regulation we heal by being with others and we heal through through, through relationships and that's essential we 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 can't get away from that at all in healing 